Hi everyone, so in this video, which is the second in the series of extending your LabVIEW development environment, I want to talk about inserting tools into your files menu, your help menu and your tools menu. Now to give you an example of this, here I have the LabVIEW welcome screen, if I go on to tools, you can see there are lots of plugins here which don't ship with LabVIEW. For example, I can create an actor from template and if you've seen my actor oriented programming series, you'll know all about this. I could do reference based object oriented programming using this item, the TLB prime here, and we could even have a DQMH plugin as well. So I spoke to Fabiola a few weeks ago all about this tool. And in these tools, these help us script and make our own applications. And we could go into help, you can see there are some extra plugin functions here. So in this video, it's going to be all about how to do this for ourselves. And if you haven't done so already, I'll ask you to like, comment and subscribe uh, down below. To insert an item into either the file, the tools or the help menu in LabVIEW is surprisingly straightforward. We're going to start off our journey inside Windows Explorer. So if we head over to the C drive, program files, national instruments, then your chosen version of LabVIEW, this is where we can plug in different items to extend our LabVIEW IDE. If we want to enter something into the files menu, we have to go to the wizards folder. For the tools menu, we go to the project folder and the help menu, we go to the help folder inside here. Now, very often your wizard folder doesn't exist but you can simply create your own wizard folder and enter functions in there. Let's check it out. As a really basic example, I just want to insert some menu items that will take me to my YouTube channel and two of the NI forums that I visit really frequently. So I've created some code here. And in this code, the, all three VIs are basically identical. I have a URL that I'm forcing to open in my default browser. Now there's a couple of things to notice though. The first is that I'm programmatically controlling the look and feel of this VI. In this case, I don't want there to be a user interface. So I'm forcing the front panel to be closed. However, in your case, you might want to open up a wizard that the user can enter values and click OK. That's totally up to you. The second thing I want to show you are the VI properties themselves. So if I go to Control I and go to the execution category, for good practice, I've disabled debugging and disabled automatic error handling. But notice how I've enabled run when opened. That's because when I insert these VIs into either the file, the tools or the help menu, and I click on one of those items, by default, these VIs will open. However, they won't run. And because they will open by default, that's why I've had to use the invoke node to keep them closed. And if they're just opened, that doesn't mean they're going to run. So we have run when opened selected. We'll click OK. Now just a quick word of warning. When we have run when opened enabled, we might get some unwanted behavior. That's because, well, as you might expect, when we open up a VI that's set to run when opened, well, that VI is going to run. And so you can see here, by just clicking on that VI, I've opened up uh, my YouTube channel. The same is going to be true for the NI Instructor forums or the LabVIEW discussion forums. You can see just by double clicking on that VI, it's run. Although my internet seems to be a bit slow here. This can lead into issues where you want to just edit your VI, but it's really frustrating because as soon as you want to open it, it runs. But a nice trick you can do is if you have LabVIEW open, create a new VI and then drag your VI in. And so you can open up this VI as a sub VI and it won't run. However, if you just try and open it from disk, it will run. So now I can go onto the block diagram and edit it. Now we've prepared our VIs or functions, it's time to actually integrate them into LabVIEW itself. So I have a folder here called useful sites and then this folder I have a VI to open up Tom's LabVIEW adventure 
and two to open up the NI discussion forums. What I'm going to do is just copy useful sites, so Control C, and I want these VIs to appear in my files uh, drop down menu. So to do that, I need to press Control Shift and N to create a new folder, call it Wizard. And perhaps in your lab view environment, Wizard is already created. We need to open up Wizard and paste those VIs in there. The file structure that you have in here is going to resemble that in LabVIEW. So when we open up LabVIEW, we expect to go to File, Useful Sites, then within Useful Sites, see Tom's LabVIEW Adventure, and the NI Forums, and within the NI Forums, see the Instructor Forum, and the Discussion Forum. So let's restart LabVIEW and see what we have. So I've just restarted LabVIEW, and if we go to File, we can see Useful Sites has just been added. We have NI Forums and Tom's LabVIEW Adventure. Now notice that Tom's LabVIEW Adventure has a triple dot at the end, as does the NI Instructor Forums and Discussion Forums. Now that's been added by the LabVIEW environment to indicate that something is going to open. So if you think about it, our VIs are opening and executing a function. Hence why you have the dot dot dot. If we open up one of these VIs, perhaps the NI Instructor Forum, you can see that our web page is now loading. Like before, my internet seems to be really bad today. Not sure what's going on there. However, that proves the functionality. So what we saw inside this demonstration was anything inside the wizard folder that's a VI or a folder will appear under the files menu. Which means if I create a copy of Tom's LabVIEW Adventure and restart LabVIEW, that copy is going to exist in the new file menu. So if I go to File, Useful Sites, we now have a copy. But let's say that copy was actually a support VI or a sub VI of Tom's LabVIEW Adventure and we didn't want it to appear in the drop down menu. What we can do there is just rename the VI and so it starts with an underscore. So a VI that starts with an underscore will not appear in the LabVIEW menu. So again, let's restart LabVIEW just to prove that any VI with an underscore won't appear. So if we go to File Now, Useful Sites, you can see that the VI with an underscore hasn't appeared. Now I want to show you another trick that we can do with these file items. So by default, those file items will appear in alphanumerical order. So starting off with any numbers, 0 through to 9, and then A to Z, uh, respectively. So I'm going to create another couple of uh, VIs, but well, I'm going to call these VIs A and B. And so if we open up uh, LabVIEW again, we're going to see A, B, in vendor 2 forum sites. Go to File, Useful Sites, NI Forums, we've got A, B, and then the Instructor Forums. Now let's say we wanted to change the order of these sites. Well, that's absolutely possible. To do that, we need to create a text file. So I'm going to right click, go to New, and then Text Document. This text document needs to be the same name as its owning folder. So if I want to change the order of my files menu, I have to call this text document wizard.txt. If I want to change the order of the NI forums, like in this case, I need to call this folder NI forums. Now inside this text document, I can now write out the list of VIs in the order that I want them. So I'm going to start off with the NI discussion forums. So I've created this text document with the order in which I want my functions to appear. So I've got the NI LAVI discussion forum, I've got a.vi, instructor.vi, and then I have a hyphen, and that hyphen is going to cause a separator to happen in my menu. And then we'll have a B underneath that. So now let's restart LAVI once again. And so when LAVI opens up, we'll be able to go to File, Useful Sites, then NI Forums, so File, Useful Sites, NI Forums, 
and notice how this menu item matches this text file. So I'll open up that text file again, go to file, useful sites. So notice how this menu list matches the text document list. And just as a reminder, this text document has to be contained within inside that submenu on disk and have the same name as that submenu. In this video, we are focused on the file menu. However, everything I've said is true for both the tools menu and the help menu. So if we go over to the tools menu, see how we have Delacour here and the create act from template and REX. If we go to Lavi 2019 event project, you'll see the Delacour folder here. And if we scroll down, you'll have uh, create act from template and rex as well in the project folder then in help we have delacore which is the only add-on i have here and you'll find that in help as well now there are a couple of other ways of adding to these menu items and fully customizing how your project explorer looks and i'm going to save that for a later video where i focus on the project provider where I can customise how the project works, different right click menus, different drop down menus, I can change icons in the project as well. So stay tuned for that, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you see my upcoming videos. Catch you later.